there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. World, the headlines read of those whose hearts are filled with greed. And rob and steal from those who need to right this wrong with blinding speed. Goes underdog, 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 underdog. Speed of lightning, roar of thunder, fighting all who rob or plunder. Underdog, underdog, underdog. I'm sure of it, Warden. It's all up and down the grapevine. There's going to be a prison break. Bad, bad. And the leader, well, he's the worst of all. You don't mean... Yep. Public enemy number one? Riff Raff. And he's got together a bunch of the prisoners to make a new mob. But even if they get out, what about the river? I don't know, Warden. But they got some kind of plan. This is terrible. We've got to do something to stop them. Only one way to stop Riff Raff. You don't mean... Yep. The world's greatest hero? Yep, Underdog. But how can we get him? Call sweet Polly Purebred. She'll know how to get Underdog. I'll call her right now. Of course I want to help you, Warden. But Underdog is always very busy. I wouldn't want to call him unless it's extremely important. Tell her. Well, sweet Polly, uh, seems like Riff Raff is getting a new gang together here in prison and plans to crash out. Maybe tonight. Break out? Yep. Me and some of the other gods heard the men talking. What did they say? Well, first we heard the prisoners who were singing. <laughs> what you say, Needles? Riff Raff has just made me one of his new mob, and we're breaking out real soon. <laughs> you! Riff Raff making you one of the gang! A guy who spends all his time sewing! <laughs> Ooh, that's the biggest laugh I ever heard! Oh, yeah? Yeah! Like I said, I'm crashing out with Riff Man. Uh, yeah, sure, Needle, sure. Gee, Smitty, if I didn't know better, I'd think it was packing to leave. Won't be long now. I'm crashing out of here. You? <laughs> you and who else? Me and Riff Raff. Riff just made me one of his new gang. You? <laughs> he made a blacksmith one of his gang. <laughs> My blacksmith went out with a horse and buggy. Oh, yeah? Stop! Stop! I believe you! You're one of Riff's gang. Hey, Nails, why are you shining up your shoes? You're going somewhere. Out, I'm going. <laughs> You're crashing out. That's a hot one. Even if you get past the walls, how you think you'll get across the river? I'm going with Riff Raff. He made me one of his new mob. <laughs> you, <laughs> you a member of Riff Raff's gang? You a broken down carpenter? <laughs> That's the best one I ever hide. <laughs> yeah, well, here it is. Like I said, I'm breaking out. So you see, sweet Polly, it looks like a real crash out. I'll call Underdog right away. Far across town, the ultrasonic hearing of Underdog, now disguised as Shoeshine, heard the cries of sweet Polly. Where, oh, where has my Underdog gone? Sir, sir, perhaps you can finish the other shoe yourself. And quickly, Shoeshine raced to a nearby telephone booth and became... So I had to say, now you listen here, Mabel. You try to give me any of your... Please, dear madam, hurry. I must use the phone booth. Meanwhile, back at the prison... That's right, Riff. I just got the word. They sent for Underdog. Then we are not waiting. We are going over the wall right now. What about the... Uh, what about him? Does he go along with us? Of course he goes along. But why, Riff? Why are you gotta take him along? I'll tell you, boys. Just in case, that's why. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just in case of what? Never mind. Now, come on. We're crashing out of this joint. Will Shoeshine be able to get into that phone booth? <laughs> and what will Riff Raff and his gang do if they get over the wall? There's plenty of excitement ahead in our next episode. And so ends another program of The Big Question, the radio program that gives away absolutely free a 10-day vacation cruise on America's most luxurious ocean liner. Remember, if the telephone rings and you're listening to the radio, you may be the winner. Flunky, I have a feeling that they're going to call me tomorrow night. Now, we don't want to miss that program. Uh, gee, Tennessee, I thought we were going fishing. Uh, what are we doing up here on Stanley's roof? We're going to fish, Chumley. I've got a feeling they're going to call me for the big question. And you have to be listening to the radio to win. But we haven't got a radio. No, but we will have in a couple of minutes. We're going to fish for Stanley's radio. No need to ask Stanley, we'll just borrow it. Watch this. Hooked it, Chumley. Now let's reel it in. Doc, it's just an old clock. Uh, shall I throw it back? No, Chumley. Put it down and I'll try again. <whistles> Got it this time. Hey, look, a picture of Stanley. Yeah, just what I wanted. But that's the thing about fishing. You've got to have patience. Flunky, Flunky, look at this room. Half the furniture is missing. The clock, my picture, the lamps, the chairs. Yeah, there's not much left but the radio. The radio. The radio. I'll grab it. Uh, uh, it's another big one, Chumley. This must be the radio. But how can it be so heavy? Here, give me a hand. I can't hold it in. Eve. He. Oh. Hang on, hang on, Mr. Livingston. Uh, uh, boy, uh, this sure is a uh, heavy radio. Yeah, I hope the line doesn't break. Hey, Blunky, yeah, never mind, Mr. Livingston. I saved the radio. Oh. Uh, hey, Tennessee, what are you doing with that red suit? I'm going calling. Here, hold on to the end of this rope. Now who? Who would want to steal my radio? Tennessee, Tennessee Tuxedo! Ho, ho, ho! Santa Claus! That's right, Stanley Livingston. Santa Claus in person. Yeah, but it's not even Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! I know it. I've come to take back the radio you got last year. You've been a bad little boy, and I'm taking it back. Ho, ho, ho! Yeah, but Santa, wait! Wait! I need that radio! Too bad, Stanley, but you should have been a better little boy during the year. Maybe this will teach you a lesson. Psst! Psst! Uh, is that okay now, Tennessee? Uh, Shall I pull you up now, Tennessee? Tennessee! Now, wait a minute, Stanley. Flunky, open the door. And stay away from here, you pesky penguin. Yes? Good afternoon, sir. We're from the Big Windy Vacuum Cleaner Company, and we'd like to give you a demonstration of our powerful super vacuum cleaner. Yes, but I... Now, I... if you'll just stand aside, my assistant will plug in the cleaner, and we'll show you what a remarkable machine it is. Yes, but I already have Allow a Allow me to demonstrate. Observe, sir, the dust on the top of this radio. Hey, what happened to my radio? Your crazy machine swallowed... Yeah, well, Tennessee tuxedo. Now wait, Stanley. Don't you now wait, Stanley, me. You just let my radio alone. But I need that radio. I've got to be listening when the big question program calls me tomorrow night. And I win that 10-day vacation. Call you? I'm the one they're going to call. I'm the one who's going to win that boat trip. What's more, I'm going to bolt this radio down so you'll never get it. As for this crazy vacuum cleaner... Now hold on, Stanley. We have to get a radio, Chumley. Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. Uh, maybe Mr. Whoopi can help us. Good idea. Let's go. So you see, Mr. Whoopi, we've got to have a radio, but we don't have any money to buy one. 
could we make one? Of course, my boy. I'll show you how to make a crystal set. The kind I used to make when I was a lad. Uh, does it need batteries? No batteries, and you don't have to plug it into the wall, either. Then how can it work? First, you have to understand what radio is. Long ago, in 1887, a German named Heinrich Hertz invented a machine that could send waves of electricity through the air. These became known as Hertzian waves. We know them today as radio waves because they radiate out in all directions. I get it. Just like when you drop a stone into water. Precisely, my boy. Now, we can't see or feel or hear these waves, so we need something called a detector to detect the waves. Back in the old days, the best detectors were minerals that came from the ground. Like coal? Well, not coal, but lots of other minerals, like this little Galena crystal. You mean I can just hold it up to my ear? Not exactly. We need some other equipment. Look here. This is called a detector stand. At this end is the holder for the crystal detector. At this end is a rod with a fine wire spring called a cat's whisker. Now, to these little posts, we connect a pair of earphones. Now, can we hear the radio waves? Not yet. First, we have to connect a very important part called the antenna, which is a wire about 75 feet long running outside the house. The antenna helps collect the radio waves and bring them into the crystal detector. Now, by moving the cat's whisker over the surface of the crystal, we can find a sensitive spot. <laughs> Whoopee! <laughs> I hear music. Uh, why no batteries of electricity? Because radio waves themselves are electricity. Boy, this is just what we need. Take it, my boy. But don't forget, you need a long wire antenna. Phineas J. Whoopee, you're the greatest. All right, Chumley. I'll get things set up here while you go out and look for a long piece of wire to use for an antenna. Uh, gee, there's a long wire running from Stanley's house to that tree. Yeah, I'll just climb up and borrow it. It doesn't look like anybody is using it anyway. <clears throat> uh, boy, it sure is fastened on tight. <clears throat> there, everything's ready and just in time, too. The program is almost on the air. Funky, Funky, it's time for the big question. Turn on the radio. Well, what's the matter? What's the matter? I don't know, boss. Nothing but static. Well, let me see. Look, the antenna's been broken off. Who do... Tennessee Tuxedo. And the name we're calling tonight is Stanley Livingston. We're dialing right now. Tennessee? Stanley, they're calling you. Yeah, me? Me? The phone, the phone, where's the phone? At your house, Stanley. They're calling at your house. Good grief. <laughs> Hello? 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 Mr. Livingston, this is the big question. Can you tell us what song we're playing on the radio right now? On the radio? Good grief. My radio isn't working. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But if you aren't listening to the radio, you can't win the 10-day cruise. Goodbye. Maybe I didn't win that 10-day cruise, but I'm going to take one anyway, and I know just who's going to take it with me. Keep rowing, fellows. Only nine more days to go. Ah. Did I ever tell you about the time I was attacked by a savage desert tribe? No, Commander, but I... I was crossing the vast sand dunes, riding swiftly on my faithful camel, SS Queen of Arabia. A camel named SS Queen of Arabia? Yes. Camels have always been known as ships of the desert. Well, there I was, riding along, when all of a sudden... I was attacked by a screaming horde of a thousand desert tribes. For a while, I gave a good account of myself, driving off attacks again and again. But finally, my ammunition ran out. 
A desperate situation. The savage horde started to close in. Nasty situation. Did you surrender? Never. I dug in fast. In fact, I dug so deep, I struck water. It ran across the desert in a regular river. And remembering that a camel is called a ship of the desert, I quickly hoisted a blanket and sailed swiftly past the startled tribesmen to safety. How nautical, Commander, but nice. Great. All right, boys, let's go. We're crashing out of here. Okay, boys, over the wall. They're breaking out, Warden. They can't get past the river. I think they got a plan, Warden. You know that riffraff. Oh, where can Underdog be? I've been calling and calling. So I said, oh, no, you don't. Just Please, dear madam, phone. hurry. I must use the phone booth. There it is, Riff, the river. And I can hear those gods behind us. Now what do we do, Riff? You said you had a plan. <laughs> Take it easy, boys. Everything's in a bag. Here you are, needles. Sail cloth, so you can show us a big sail. And this sail came from the ghost ship of Captain Kidd. Here you are, Smitty. Iron from the ghost ship of Captain Kidd. Let's see you turn us out an anchor. And for you, Nails, special wood from the ghost ship of Captain Kidd. Start rebuilding that old ship. What about him? We're doing all the work. What's he along for? Just in case. That's what for. Just in case. Meanwhile, back at the phone booth, that woman was finally leaving, and humble and lovable Shoeshine stepped into the phone booth to become... Underdog! When Polly's in trouble, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go! The bloodhounds are after them, and those prisoners can't swim that river. Oh, I think they've got a plan, Warden. Oh, if only Underdog were here! There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Oh, hurry, Underdog. Riff Raff and a strange new mob are escaping from prison. The river should stop them. It always has. But I think they've got a plan. Underdog, you'd better rush down to the riverbank. All right, snap to it. Haul up the anchor and let's get out of here. Get that sail into the wind. I heard them talking near this tree, but now they've disappeared on me. Shh! Everybody keep quiet. We can see under the Riff. Why can't he see us? Because this is a ghost ship. Nobody can see it. And that's how we're going to rob every other ship on the high seas. After escaping from the mighty underdog, Riff and his mob began terrorizing every ship on the ocean. Military ships. Where'd that rope ladder come from? It, it, it just came out of nowhere. All right, sailor boys. Up with the hands. We are taking all your guns and ammunition and supplies. Riff Raff and a ghost ship. Riff's gang robbed private yachts. It's a lovely day, Henry. Sure is a perfect day for fishing. My pearls. They've disappeared. Riff Raff and a ghost ship. Huge passenger liners were robbed. Okay, boys, start at the top and work your way down. The situation seemed hopeless. Even the mighty underdog could do nothing in the face of a ghost ship. I cannot fight what I cannot see, and the ghost ship's invisible even to me. But unknown to underdog, TV's top reporter, Sweet Polly Purebred, had decided to take a dangerous gamble to try and capture Riff and his mob. I'm nailing myself in this crate. When Riff Raff and his gang rob the ship, they'll be taking me along. I can call out and underdog will be able to find the ghost ship. Will Polly's plan work? Will she be able to stop Riff Raff and his gang of pirates? There's a thrilling time ahead in our next exciting episode. <laughs>